Welcome back to the seventh video about my electronic steering wheel slash rudder truck IP68 project. In the previous video we cut the uh, key slot through the wheel hub card here, link in the description. And today I want to start with the main body. Enjoy! Before we do some actual milling, we of course have first a look at the plans. That is the overview plan again and last time we worked here on the wheel hub and it's almost finished. And then here in blue we have the big squarish pom body, which will be the main bearing for the shaft uh, Yeah, in reddish here. And here's the detailed plan for the POM body. Uh, we don't have to go in each and every detail right now. The idea is you have a big squarish block here and we put a lot of holes in that block and uh, including the center hole 60 millimeters for the shaft and then on the round table afterwards we mill out some round features here positive at the front and negative so inside like a round pocket in the back. The round inside pocket at the back will of course house the flange of our shaft so it can't be pulled out and the stop bolt so we can only rotate plus minus a little less than 180 degrees. And the round feature at the front is to make the lips of basically our POM bearing for the shaft a little bit more more flexible here at the front where there are the loads. Why that is, watch that video again, card here, link in the description about the static calculations. Anyway, looking from the front, our POM block is a perfect square 70 millimeters by 70 millimeters and looking from the side it's a little bit elongated to 81.5 millimeters. So let's get down to those measurements. The POM block I bought, yeah, card to the mailbag uh, here, link in the description, is already pretty square on all sides, but uh, we need to mill it down to the correct dimensions as mentioned. And we have a long side here about 73 point something millimeters. And I placed that here in the vise with two parallels, which are really, yeah, uh, not moving so I know that uh, the parallel side is really sitting down here and uh, we don't get any angle. Okay, there is nothing new here to see. I already did that uh, some time ago, card here, link in the description, just uh, got a block of POM down to the required measurements. So I'll just give you a time lapse. The surface looks quite good, but I think there's still a wee bit of a trimming error here. I mean, I tried to minimize that uh, card here, link in the description, but it's still there. Um, you, you can feel it, you can feel it. You, maybe you can hear it. See, there is a, <clears throat> sorry. See, there is a visible, almost not feelable, well, you can feel it with your nail almost, uh, edge here. But as before, we can work around that by running just a quarter with uh, advances here over the piece with our tool, which is... <laughs> that's an imperial tool, it's one inch in diameter. So yeah, uh, twice as, as much passes, but uh, that should work.
not perfect, but yeah, more than good enough. Okay, I will turn that piece now uh, around again with the parallels on, at the bottom, now referencing to our freshly milled surface, and then we'll do the same. I turned the block around and as mentioned, the machine surface is resting on parallels again. And we are at a height uh, currently at 73.5 ish millimeters. So I will take some rough passes here, half, uh, taking off half a millimeter each pass and then we go from there. What a bloody mess. Anyway, I took uh, four cuts in total. The first cut that was a rough cut at once in each time 25 millimeters and only half a millimeter deep. That went easy. So I took two more cuts one millimeter deep, also rough at once in 25 millimeters. And at the end, I took another half millimeter cut and advanced only 12 and a half millimeters. So I get a nice smooth surface uh, <clears throat> besides my trimming arrow. And now we should be at 70 point something millimeter. Uh, let me clean up and measure that. And we are at 70.49 and I measured that for the other corners too. Uh, plus minus a hundreds or so, a few hundreds, yeah, 70.49. Um, yeah, one more pass, uh, five tenths of a millimeter, maybe a hundreds less. <laughs> I cannot dial that in on the machine, uh, but let's do it anyway, or try it at least. And we are at 69.99. Uh, that corner was 70.01 and the corner uh, at the back 70.00. So yeah, right on track. Next pair of surfaces. So that is machined now and that is machined. And if I didn't mess up, uh, these should be parallel. Now I can use one of them as a reference surface and my vise at the other reference surface and watch here. You cannot, can you hear that? Wait a sec. Yeah, that's wobbling a little bit. Uh, let me zoom in on the slot. Yeah, there at the left hand side, there you can see it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just press that surface against that surface and put some round stock here at the back, uh, approximately, yeah, positioned at half the height of the vise jaw on the other side and that should uh, make <laughs> after we machined it the top square to that surface hopefully I turned the block around again, so our freshly machined surface is now at the bottom and we're using the parallels again. And yeah, that side, that side and that side should be at a right angle. Uh, we're here height-wise at about 20, uh, 72 millimeters. So I will first do a cut here uh, with uh, the small stepping, 12 and a half millimeters one and a half millimeter deep and then yeah we see how much more we have to go down we are at 70.61 at that corner and the other corners i measured are about the same 
76.2763. So we will take off another 0.6 millimeters and uh, then we're done with that side. And we are at 70.01, good enough. The other corners were similar, 70.02 or something. Last pair of surfaces, same game again. So here for the first passes on the top, which will be the bottom of course in a second, uh, I'm using here some round stop uh, clamping on one side. So I make the already machined surface and that surface of my vice uh, reference surfaces. And we're starting out at a 48.5-ish uh, millimeters. We have to go down to 81 and a half millimeters. So uh, to take three millimeters off in total. So I will do here the first clean off cut uh, one millimeter deep. Yeah. Pieces turned around, resting on parallels, and we are at 83.58. So I think I will go down 1.6 millimeter in one pass, and then we measure again. Okay, I don't know what happened here, but uh, you can probably not see it really. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, it started at that corner here. So I was taking off a little bit more material. And uh, I thought, hey, yeah, what the heck, uh, do another pass. And then I really took out here something substantial. And at that corner, we're down to <laughs> a little under, a few hundreds under 81.5. And I have no idea what happened. Uh, so we are still sitting at the bottom on the parallels. Uh, no problem there. Is there no problem? Yeah, no problem there. So I think my <coughs> tool uh, <laughs> moved a little bit down for some reason. Everything else I checked it is clamped up. So uh, yeah, with that height setting, I will do one last pass and uh, that's it. So yeah, we are now a little bit under 81.5, so 81.44. So we lost a few hundreds, but uh, yeah, uh, it's not critical, but uh, it's irritating. It's irritating. Now it's time to scribe some lines on our little POM block. We just have to keep in mind that in one direction, mention we're <clears throat> a little bit short. So yeah, uh, 81.4 instead of 81.5. Which is not that big of a deal with if we have here now 81.40 instead of 81.5. Because that pocket here that will be mill out at the end with the dimension or the depth 16.5 millimeters. There is 0.5 millimeters wiggle room there. So we just go down here two to 16.40 and we're golden. Now beside the milled features for that pocket at the front and yeah, that extension here at yeah, the pocket at the back and the extension here at the front, we have a lot of holes. We have at one side, one, two, three, four, five holes. That's the back side. And at the front side, we have one, two, three, four, and five holes, the big hole, six millimeter hole for the shaft. And it's much easier to <clears throat> scribe all these markings <laughs> on 
the part while it's still a simple block and drill all those holes while it's a simple block than to start trying to scribe and drill holes when we are uh, at the finished uh, overall shape. So yeah, let's start by scribing not <laughs> one of the 10 holes sorry, uh, but by scribing that 30 millimeter mark, which will be milled down here on the round table. Next, we can do some center lines at the front of the back because it's always good to have center lines. And uh, for the big hole, we need, of course, the center of the piece to align our drill. At the front, we have four more holes here, nine millimeters from the edge. Uh, it makes no sense here to scribe for the groove for the O-ring because, uh, yeah, uh, this will be all machined down and this will probably a uh, pain in the behind <clears throat> to get that <laughs> groove in, but uh, yeah, I'll do my best. Just making sure I'm really scribing those lines at the front. I have, yeah, my 30 millimeter line here where we'll mill down, but uh, yeah, that's the front. On the back, we have four more holes, but these are seven millimeters from the edge. And I won't scratch them all the way through because there will be a lot more lines here on that face. That hole for a stop bolt is at the center line and 16 millimeters from the edge. Now for the O-ring groove and the pocket, the round pocket that will be milled into the back side here. Uh, the top of those O-ring grooves is just 2.5 millimeters away from the edge and I just mark it here at the outsides so I can align the stuff easier on the round table much later. And I'm desperately trying to find a camera angle where you can actually see me doing those scratches but uh, it's hopeless. But yeah, uh, maybe you can see it this way. The groove for the O-ring is four millimeters wide. So the inner edge here of the O-ring is four plus two and a half. So six and a half millimeters from the outer edge of the piece. And finally, the pocket to be milled out is a two and a half plus two and a half plus four millimeters. So nine millimeters from the edge of the piece. And these were all the lines I need on my piece for now. And that's it also for today. I told you in the beginning or in between that I had a nagging feeling I forgot something. Uh, before we start the next milling operation, that is drilling all the holes, I have to make a little helper part. Uh, you will see next week. There will be probably also a mini mailbag before we continue with the project. Till then, Bye.